Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Alexandra Marie and I am a business mentor for women in direct sales. I'm also the VP of another company that helps women in direct sales. So I am incredibly excited to be here with you today and talk about a few things on how you can boost your income. So we're gonna talk about five ways to see a quick return on your investment in your time. Um, and so let's just get right into it. So number one is personal development. And you might be like, oh my gosh, is she serious? Yes, I'm serious. Um, your level of personal development should usually directly reflect your level of income. Um, and I don't mean just you know, listening to a million audiobooks and reading Girl Wash Your Face 20 times. I mean, are you reading personal development or listening to auto, you know, audible or a podcast. And are you actually implementing what they're teaching? So before I was big into doing like lots and lots of volume, I was like, I'm going to read all the books. You should see my nightstand. It's covered in like all the books, all the trending books. And then I started to slow it down and do, you know, one chapter every three days to one chapter a week. And I would read that one chapter and I would really soak it in. And I would actually start to implement the things that I was learning. And it drastically changed my day-to-day -day life. My stress levels went down, my income went up, my joy levels went up, those around me were more joyful. It's really impactful what happens when you actually implement what you're learning or what you're reading. So personal development is a huge piece. Also, Ed Milet says that inspiration and motivation are not what lead to success, but routine and habits. So if you make personal development a habit, I feel like it keeps you motivated quite often because it's constantly filling your cup with new ideas. It's constantly allowing you to kind of pour into yourself and educate yourself. And if you look at those that are wealthy, most of them read a lot of books. And so I believe that we can learn from people who are doing it well, and we can start to implement those things in our day-to-day -day life. So personal development is going to be number one, and it's going to be one thing that's super big into your journey as an entrepreneur. Next, I would say setting goals, but not just setting goals, not just being like, whoa, I want to make $20,000 a month. I want you to break these things down month to month, week to week on how you need to do that. If you need to be making, you know, 10 grand next month, break it down to how much do I need to sell? How many services? How many products do I need to sell? How many people do I need to recruit in my business? How do I need to get them launched? What do I need to do in order to hit those goals? You can have a destination, but if you don't have a roadmap, you're never going to get there. Or if you are going to get there, it could take you a really, really long time if you don't have it broken down. So here's the thing though. So many people set goals and actually don't follow through with them. So how can we prevent them? Well, that's number three, accountability. Finding someone who you would trade places with, finding someone who believes in you, finding someone who's on your team, finding someone who you trust is really important that you have that relationship. There was a study done where it was 96, you're 96% 96 more likely to accomplish your goals if you have accountability in place. Now that is huge. This is weekly meetings with the same person. I know for myself when I have my accountability meetings with either my coach or other women that I'm meeting with, if I show up week after week, not accomplishing the things I said I'm going to do, it's kind of embarrassing for me. So it kind of drives me to actually accomplish the things that I'm wanting to do. I don't know about you, but that's how it works for me. So it's really important to have those people in your life that can keep you accountable, that can speak into your life, that can say, hey, you're doing great. Or, hey, like, I see you doing this. Maybe let's make some adjustments. And you're like, if you may say, oh, I don't have anyone in my life like that, or I don't know where to find that. You guys, I pay a coach every single month to keep me accountable and to help me in my business. I, someone I trust, someone who roots for me, someone I believe in, that's why I do what I do is to help keep women accountable. I work with women to keep them accountable. I have multiple programs, so it's never an excuse of, I can't afford that, right? Because some people couldn't afford what I pay my coach. I have programs that are $39.99 a month to help you reach your goals. It's very possible, it's just a matter of, are you looking for other ways? Are you making excuses? That is one big piece in this as well. So number four, talking to people. So I know that sometimes it's hard because we're like, oh, tr attraction marketing and curiosity marketing and I'm, you know, marketing my business in certain ways. It's really important that you're actually just sending people messages. And I don't say go mass message or, you know, copy and paste or cold message people because that's nobody likes that, right? There's apps out there and websites like Teamsy, for example, that help you remember how many people do I need to talk to? Who do I need to talk to? Who have I not talked to? Who's on my team if you're in direct sales that I need to talk to? Who's you know a customer I need to follow up with that allow you to remember who you need to talk to? 
I would set a goal of how many people you can talk to a day. Now, if you are, say, like you don't have a job, you stay at home, you don't have a lot on your plate, I would set the goal of how many people you talk to a little bit higher. Um, on average, I would say two to five people a day. And that's not including, you know, going on and commenting on posts on Facebook. That's not including engaging in groups. That's not including posting your content. But I want you guys to be able to message someone and not be overwhelmed by your inbox and give them the best of you. So it's not just like a, oh, I'm so stressed out. I have to reply to these people. I'm trying to get them out of my inbox. It's a genuine conversation where you can actually engage with that person. And it can be something as little as, hey, like to an old customer, how are you doing? You know, like, I'd just love to follow up with you and see how you've been. Um, a potential customer or a potential downline or just someone you've never talked to just reaching out and saying, hey, I would just love to connect with you. You're on my friends list. I know social media, it's easier, to, you know, to not connect actually with the people, but I'd love to just introduce myself and get to know you a little bit. And that's your opportunity to fish and not hunt. So you don't want to throw your business in people's face. You don't want to be like, Hey, like you don't want to be aggressive, right? But you want to share your business. And if they ask, yeah, how are we doing? You can be like, I'm great. Like business, I've been working on my business a lot lately and it's been going really well. That gives them the opportunity to say, do I want to take the bait or do I not? Do I want to engage in this conversation or do I want to walk away? And you allow them to make that decision. Number five, adding value. It's so important to know if you have a Facebook group or those that are following you, what are they looking for? Are they looking to find value in anything that you're doing? Um, what value are they looking for? What are they, you know, what do they want? So this is where it's a great place to message the people in your group and say, hey, I just want to thank you so much for being in my group. Um, I know you've been here for a while. I just wanted to see, is there anything I can do to, you know, better serve you in my group or any of my posts or my content? Is there anything I can educate you on to better serve you? And just making those connections and having those conversations and knowing how to add value, um, adding value through your posts, reaching the people that you want to reach and not just using your posts as a, you know, filler, but using them to actually add value to people's lives. I think that that's so important because that builds your brand, that builds your market, that builds trust with customers, potential customers, potential downlines. And it also just lets them know that you care. I and mean, when you're adding value and reaching out and having conversations, it also allows to open the door for you to create more revenue. So these are little things that you can do to start to see more income coming in, more ideas. Really the talking to people and adding value is going to be where you'll see a really quick turnaround on income is having those conversations. But the other things are what will lead to a steady, more abundant income stream from your businesses or business, whatever you're doing. Um, they're also just really good things to do in life. Just as a, a person, a mom, whatever you're, you know, you're wanting to do, setting these goals and working on personal development, having accountability to accomplish your goals. Those are all really important. So those are just five quick ways to grow your income, to grow your joy, to help your business. And I hope that this is beneficial for you. If you have any questions, feel free to send me an email at alexandramariehogg at gmail.com. That's alexandra, M-A-R-I-E-H-O-G-G -G, at gmail.com. Thanks so much.